One, two, three, four. <laughs> blues on your banjo is actually one of the funnest styles you can take on <clears throat> and for many reasons um, not only can you play it as a legitimate blues instrument and the tone is great because there's not as much sustain as a guitar so it actually has kind of a saxophone sound to it so we don't really try to hold long notes because our notes fade away kind of quickly after all it's a bongo on a stick but more we use it as an expression to play phrases that have lots of silence. And it gives us a real, like I said, saxophone sound, which is really neat. To start out on the blues, the best way is to learn the open blues scale in G. And I'm going to show you that in this lesson, and then we'll um, show you some sources toward the end of this video where you can get all the scales on the banjo for all the blues keys and be flying around the fingerboard. For now, we're going to start on the open D string, zero, and then press it the third fret, or three, zero, three, and do the same thing on the next string over the G string, zero, three. So we've gone zero, three, zero, three, and they're gonna move up to a C note on the second string, which is second string, first fret, and then we're gonna go over to the open D string, and then we're gonna go to the open D string at the third fret and then you can land on the fifth string but just to make it nice and grisly I'm gonna do the uh, that same note at the fifth fret on the first string so we end here. and the reason is we can pull off from that we can do a vibrato if we want okay there's some there's some muscly stuff we can do that we don't have available on the open fifth string so once again that pure open G position blues scale, also the minor pentatonic, if you will, is open four, four three, open three, three three, two one, one zero, one three, one five. Okay, so one more demonstration, then we'll play it together. And of course, back down. go back down I like to go all the way to the open D string but then end on that G note to give it kind of some closure okay so we're gonna practice that together um, after the count of four nice and slowly one two three four Go ahead and try that with a blues backing track and this is the cool part about the blues yes you can go to YouTube type in blues backing track find something in G and practice that scale along with the backing track the sooner you start thinking of this scale as a means to express yourself and say bluesy stuff and not just recite it and ascend and descend the better Okay, so here we go, playing that same exact scale in time with our blues backing track. And of course, this blues backing track, as well as a ton of other keys, are available at jamalong.org. Uh, just go to the search bar, type in 12 bar blues, and you'll see it pop up. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
really cool because when you think of practicing scales, you usually don't think of anything that fun. So here we go with the blues scale, which is, in my opinion, more fun than most scales you'll learn. And then we played along with the Jam Along Blues backing track. And literally, you can be practicing your scale and it almost sounds like you're taking a solo. So what's the next step after you get this in your brain stamp? Right? Then what we're going to do is basically learn how to jam, learn how to rock out on this scale. And how we do that is actually simpler than you might think. <clears throat> and we talk about this in detail in our lesson, Scales for Improvisation, at jamalong.org. Um, once again, just go to Jam Along, type in the search bar, Scales for Improvisation, and you'll see this lesson pop up. And we give you the tools. Um, but I'm going to give you a summary here, and what that means is we want to break up the linearity of the scale. We want to make it sound like we're rocking out and not playing scales. So as opposed to this, instead we're doing something more akin to this. difference between that and the scale is I was adding a couple of elements that anyone, including you, can do within minutes. Okay? The first thing is we have to have a beat. Whether you're tapping on a tambourine like I'm doing right here, or you have a backing track, which I recommend, and we have tons of backing tracks on the jamalong.org site, you want to have that groove going. Once you have the groove, that will get you in the mood, and then what you're going to be doing is adding in pauses or rests as we call it in music rest 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 it's just like with speaking or writing i'm adding in commas that is huge that's what makes the difference between reciting a scale and saying a musical phrase the french composer claude debussy was quoted as saying Music is the silence between the notes, and nowhere is this more applicable than in blues, for sure. Because when you hear a good blues player, they're opt to be they're talking in phrases like, and then they wait and they think, then they say something else. So that way, what's happening is you're saying something, you're thinking, and you're saying something. So number one, this is an easy one. You're going to add in pauses. So if you actually run out of ideas and freak out and go rabbit in the headlights, think of it as you're adding rests and it's actually more musical that way. Okay. The next thing is we want to add in repetition where we repeat one or two or three notes in a row. It's called a riff. So we would have something like this. Such a great blues trick, man. Once you start putting that in there, you'll automatically sound like you're saying stuff. I don't know why it is, but when you repeat stuff, it's like you're telling something over and over again. You're making a point. You're driving it in. So if I play that scale, rest, 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 repeat. Rest, rest, another repeat. Rest, 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 repeat. Just using rests and repeats, and you'll already turn that scale into music. It's magical. Remember to always do this with the backing track. Otherwise, there's no canvas to paint on. You have to have that heartbeat. Okay? The third thing we're going to add, it's really fun, is simply left hand ornaments, or what we call LHO in Jam Along. So those are the hammers where you pick a note and then slam your, your fretting hand down to make a second note. So I pick once and slam down. So right away you can see you can add those on the 0 3, zero, three of this scale we just learned. Okay, the next one is the bend where we can sometimes when we're at those threes, especially on the G string, we can push it sideways and make it a little bit tortured sounding. Classic blues move. All the day long. Okay, even here. 
So the first of the left hand ornament is the band. The second is the hammer. And we have the pull off, which is the opposite of the hammer. Okay, and finally we have the slide where we hit a note, we slide up. So you combine, of course, the given is having a backing track, then adding rests, doing repeats, and tossing in LHO, left hand ornaments, and you have blues. Let's try that in action. start doing that you're not playing scales man you're making music you're rocking out and you're having more fun than a billy goat in a briar patch this is the sort of thing which really opens your mind right away to the idea of improvising on your banjo and blues is so perfect for that it's so awesome for that we can do that all day long so in summation what you're going to be doing is learning that basic open string blues scale you're going to be going to jamalong.org and, and acquiring a backing track. All of our backing tracks are only five bucks. And basically, the 12 bar blues backing track has all the keys, too. A lot of keys to work out in. And then eventually, when you get bored of that, which should take you a while, you're going to want to go over and pick up our scales for improvisation lesson where we teach you those same blues scales, but in the movable shapes that move all up and down the neck where you can be in any key and any register. So instead of this, we have this, which that's in G, right? Up two frets, A. Two more frets, B. On and on and on, D. E. So once you learn the movable scale shapes, you literally own the fingerboard, okay? It's really, really awesome. Let me give a demonstration of how we might play in the key of G using those movable shapes that we teach you in our Scales for Improvisation lesson. <laughs> started learning blues on your banjo I'm telling you not only will you be a better blues player but you can sneak it into any other style country rock bluegrass if I'm playing um, will the circle be unbroken <laughs> I can throw in that same open position blue scale. Check this out. It works everywhere like a charm. So do yourself a favor, hop over to jamalong.org. We've got links in the bottom of this video and uh, get started on the blues today. It'll open up a whole new universe for you on the five wire. See you out picking. <laughs>